and track gene fusions represent a, a tumor agnostic biomarker. And we have uh, NTRAC inhibitors that have uh, shown to give good responses and also responses that are durable over time. So we need to know a little bit more about what NTRAC gene fusions are, what are the techniques that we can reuse in uh, our diagnostic setting, and we need to know uh, about strategy for screening and uh, for detecting resistance to track inhibitors. The NTRAC genes uh, constitute a family of uh, tyrosine kinases. We have three members, NTRAC1, 2, and 3, and these three genes uh, map to different chromosomal locations. Um, physiologically, the NTRAC genes play a role in neuronal uh, differentiation, and the expression of the wild-type protein is restricted to specific tissue, mainly neuronal components in other tissues. We uh, got to understand that uh, malignancies can harbor uh, NTRAC gene fusions. And when we talk about gene fusion, we talk about chimeric genes. In particular, in, in this specific setting of uh, the NTRAC gene fusion, we would have the three prime portion of the uh, NTRAC genes that is just opposed to the five prime portion of another gene. And we say typically that NTRAC genes are promiscuous because when they form these chimeric genes, they can have different partners. We know more than 80 partners that are, have been described so far. And uh, these fusion genes have been shown to have oncogenic properties. In terms of epidemiology, we got to understand that we have a kind of paradox because we have some rare histologic types, like for instance, secretory carcinoma of the breast or secretory carcinoma of the salivary gland that harbor at very high frequency a specific NTRAC3 rearrangement that is the ETV6 NTRAC3 gene fusion. Uh, on the other side, we have different malignancies, a plethora of different malignancies that can harbor at very low frequency um, either uh, a rearrangement affecting NTRAC1, 2, or 3. When we talk at very high frequency, we talk about uh, a genetic alteration that is pathognomonic of that specific histologic type. So we find this alteration in more than 95% of cases. On the other side, when we talk about very low frequency, we talk about less than 0.1, of cases. When we have to approach uh, uh, NTRAC gene fusion uh, in the diagnostic setting, um, if you talk to your pathologist, you, uh, you would understand that we have different options. On one side, we may use the uh, in vitro nucleic acid based assays, mainly DNA or RNA based uh, next generation sequencing panels. Of course, if we uh, handle NTRAC gene fusion testing with a DNA based panel, we would look for a genetic rearrangement. We would not have any information on the expression of the chimeric genes. Whereas this information can be gathered if we use uh, an RNA based panel. And also we know from the literature that uh, RNA based panel have higher sensitivity in detecting NTRAC gene fusions. On the other side, we could also use an in situ uh, approach either immunostochemistry, when we have the possibility actually to use pan uh, antibodies, or for a to hybridization. Again, with the first to hybridization, we are looking at gene fusion at DNA level. So again, we have the same issues related to the fact that we detect a genetic rearrangement. And in addition, with FWISH, given that we have three genes to screen, we would have to run three different uh, experiments. The track inhibitors that are currently available are approved for uh, patients that are affected uh, by a malignancy at an advanced stage that harbors an NTRAC gene fusion. So if we have to um, uh, think about a strategy uh, when uh, testing and identifying this NTRAC gene fusion, I would say that we could uh, uh, subdivide our testing into two uh, different boxes. If we are examining a tumor that, uh, for which we already know that we would uh, uh, find most likely an ATV6 NTRAC3 gene fusion, then we could use either FISH or an RNA-based panel to confirm the presence of an ATV6 NTRAC3 rearrangement. On the other side, if we do not know whether uh, this specific tumor is likely to harbor an intra gene fusion, we would have to screen a large uh, series of, uh, of tumors. Well, the first thing would be to ascertain whether we have already a molecular platform available at our institution that is already running for diagnostic testing. And in that case, uh, an RNA-based panel uh, in uh, NGS would be the best solution uh, to look for intra gene fusion. 
If we do not have this option, then we could use the so-called two-step approach in which we would use immunochemistry first as a screening tool, and then whatever positivity is uh, observed uh, in the tissue samples uh, has to be reflexed uh, at the molecular level by an RNA-based panel for fish uh, to double check whether uh, this uh, expression is actually stemming from the presence of the chimeric gene. From different clinical studies, we got to understand that uh, uh, resistance may ultimately actually emerge, resistant to NTRAC uh, inhibitors. And we realized that this uh, resistance may stem from either a mutation, an NTRAC uh, mutation, um, uh, and this is called on-target resistance. Otherwise, we also have the possibility that has been described in more recent papers of having another genetic alteration affecting a gene that is uh, related to NTRAC in terms of signaling pathway, that is blocking uh, the NTRAC uh, signal. And this is called off-target resistance. In both cases, we would have to switch to other uh, therapeutic compounds. So second generation track inhibitors in the first scenario or other compounds targeting the other genes. And this uh, reasoning may also lead us to think about the fact that uh, a comprehensive genomic profiling of the tumor uh, may be actually uh, informative since the beginning. Mm -hmm.